Economics from Scotland. We have just entered Scotland and stopped. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Well, everywhere is like this, really. Uh, just for a little break. So we drove from Oxfordshire early this morning. We left home at the crack of dawn to beat all the traffic and uh, uh, we drove through uh, Oxfordshire, Warwickshire and past Birmingham, beat all the traffic and we had passed Birmingham by the time the rest of Britain was waking up and uh, then through Staffordshire, Lancashire, uh, Cumbria and the Lake District and into Scotland. So uh, we are at a place um, uh, coming close to our final destination which is south of Edinburgh in the Tweed Valley and uh, uh, Scotland is that's why we keep coming back and we were here uh, just over two months ago and when we first came here we we fell in love and thought we'll come back to the same area uh, let me see uh, if I can find Jane walking Mecca. Um, um, they are they're somewhere in those hills. You can see walking people walking there far up um, on mountains. Um, Scotland is Scotland. Um, yes, there is Switzerland, which is extremely pretty. Uh, extremely tidy, extremely beautiful, but I think the Scottish hills there's an ambience of mystery. I think the colours are darker, and you sometimes feel that uh, there'll be a monster or a dragon or something, some mythical creature is going to pop out and say hello to you. It's very, very Harry Potterish. Uh, no wonder J.K. Rowling has chosen Edinburgh as her place to live. Uh, so we are heading towards Peebles where we're probably about 30 odd miles away across those hills. We are going northwest from this point across those hills there uh, where we have a little cottage by the River Tweed itself uh, waiting for us. So we have finally reached our destination, Peebles, or as the locals call it, Peebles. Sorry, my Scottish is absolutely awful, so I wouldn't even try. Um, so here we are. It's a beautiful old town with only a few thousand people. Uh, that's the river, and we're standing on the riverside. And uh, would you believe we are so fortunate we got a cottage right there. So you can see that's the cottage we've rented and we managed to park right in front of it. So that's the a very ancient town of Peebles. The main trade used to be, and still is, Tweed. And also the River Tweed is famous for is salmon and salmon fishing. Um, so this is the river bank and this is going to be our home for uh, the weekend. We we'll spend our Easter here, and look who we have here is Mika. Hello, Mika. Hello, say hello. There she is. She's been in the water already. The water's really exciting for her. It's shallow, but it's got a bit of a current, so it's safe but very, very exciting. She's shivering a bit, so I think I'll take her home now. Um, you can see the hills surrounding the town and as you drive out you hit the hills pretty much straight away so here we are in Peebles so it's Easter Saturday and day two of our adventures in the Tweed Valley surrounding Peebles which is in the south of Edinburgh uh, the weather's not perfect but good enough uh, fairly cold and uh, let's see what the rest of the day brings. Uh, Peebles, what can I tell you about Peebles? It's a 
Uh, it's a prosperous place. Um, it's little, as you can see, the edges, surrounded by hills. I have parked my car um, on the high street and recording this. Um, it's a tiny street, but uh, with lots of independent shops. You have butchers and bakers, green grocers, and it's heartening to see that unlike the rest of the country, uh, the big chains has not wiped off the identity of the place. So um, people are a good mix. I've seen uh, young and old and uh, young families with children, um, youth, elderly people, uh, people of working age. And I hear that a lot of these people, they um, work in Edinburgh and have chosen to live in the valley around Peebles and the villages and commute to Edinburgh on a daily basis. So that's the Scottish Salter flying next to the Union Jack. Probably symbolises the uh, history of a thousand plus years of the two people and the kingdoms of England and Scotland. Um, the salt here, interestingly, is is a slanted cross of St Andrews, who is the patron saint of Scotland and uh, who was one of the apostles, and against a blue sky. Uh, and the story goes that when St Andrews was captured by the Romans and uh, about to be crucified somewhere in Greece, his wishes were not to be put on a straight cross. He said, um, I'm not worthy of dying in the same way as Jesus did, so could you put me on a slanted cross? I don't know how true it is, but uh, apparently that's what the story is. So, yeah, the history of um, the two kingdoms, sometimes bloody, sometimes not so bloody, and sometimes most certainly uh, friendly. Yes, seeing the two flags flying together made me reflect on um, the history and the relationship of the two people and the two kingdoms, uh, Scotland and England, particularly post-Brexit. And uh, there's been a lot of talks about Scottish independence. So this uh, union and disunion, um, the fights and love affairs, they go back many years ago. Um, it all, uh, about 500 odd years ago in uh, 1600, early 1600, I think it was 1607 or so, uh, James the Sixth, who later became uh, king James the first of England. So James the sixth was a Scottish king who through inheritance uh, inherited the kingdom of England and Ireland and he made a personal union of the three kingdoms. So that was the uh, roots of the current union and then following uh, King James's um, personal union and the actual political union came about in uh, 1600, early 1600, so, um, oh, beg your pardon, early 1700s, which is just over 400 years ago. Um, so it's a bit of a fallacy that uh, the English um, sort of imposed, um, you know, and, and drove this union. It was um, King James, who was the Scottish king. Um, Shakespeare's time, obviously Shakespeare's greatly influenced by those stories. And those of you who've read King Lear, it was all about the unions and disunions of these kingdoms. And Macbeth was actually written around the character of King James. So anyway, um, 
It's been a shared history for the last many centuries where Scots have been an integral part of Britain as we know it today. Um, at one point I probably had uh, more Scottish friends than I had English friends uh, in England. There's uh, so many of them and it's been intertwined. Uh, so many Scottish people have married uh, English and vice versa and uh, the areas where um, you know that they, they live as one people. I'd always felt uh, they're one people. Um, I think one of the one of the observations I will make here is um, you know the Scots are politically slightly left-leaning, not slightly, pretty strongly left-leaning. Uh, it's in their makeup and it reflects in a lot of the legislation they have in their healthcare systems and their welfare policies and education policies um, which is a lot different in a lot of policy areas in England so it's kind of okay if the Westminster government is a left-leaning one or to say a Labour one uh, the Scots feel represented but whenever there's a Tory rule um, actually governing the entire United Kingdom uh, the Scots feel and I think fairly rightly unrepresented the 650 members of Parliament now in Westminster and it's a Tory government majority out of which there is just one Scottish Tory that's not representation at all um, however, devaluation is happening, uh, apart from raising taxes and defence, uh, the Scots are increasingly managing their own affairs. I personally don't know where it'll go. I hope uh, the Union stays and uh, um, I have not known it in any other way. Um, I why do I want the Union to stay? It's a personal matter. Um, I have only one filter that I apply in judgments like this that permeates my politics is is it going to unite or is it going to divide? If it's the former, I'm in favour of it. If it's the latter, I say no to it. So who knows about the future? But uh, I think it's overhyped about uh, the Scottish and English disagreements, land agreements. Say there's more things in common between the two people, and it's still one nation. Well, good morning from a beautiful place called Logan Lee. Uh, we are here to spend uh, most of our day, uh, as you can see. Uh, uh, few words are required to describe the place. We wanted to go to Edinburgh initially, but we decided to skip that and stay in the area because um, we feel that this can't be beaten. So, what I have decided is to spend the day, half the day rather, fly fishing. Uh, with a local man called Steve as Jane and Mecca uh, walks those trails surrounding the hills. There are a few sheep, it's the lambing season and Mecca can chase and disturb the sheep so uh, they are working out uh, the safest route for themselves. So uh, let's see how the day goes. It's uh, a bit rainy, so it's more authentic and more Scottish. Uh, there's there's my fisherman guide, Steve, who's getting half a day's permit, and Jane and Mecca in the distance. And uh, I hope we catch uh, uh, some decent fish. And uh, if I can't, I'll have to stop by at the fishmongers. I'll catch up with you later. Steve, teaching me how to cast. Hi, 
guys tell me what I'll do is I'll demonstrate the cast here first and then I'll show you how it's made, okay? Okay. Point of the water, the rod butt is against my forearm. So we'll bring it up slowly, accelerate back to a stop, fall to a stop, and back. Okay. Okay. You make it sound easy. That's because I've been doing it a long time. I bet you are. Thank you. Your turn. Oh dear. Well, this is the Scotland we've come to see. It's absolutely stunning. Here we are. We are moving to another spot around the loch. There's Steve. Go on, Steve. Say something. How do you how do you feel about our prospects today, then? We're definitely going to catch one here. Excellent. Definitely. Okay, so you're trying to look for another spot. That's the lake. And we are standing on a dam. Let's do it 360 degrees so you can have a good idea about the landscape here. And this to you, friends, is Scotland. So we have been fishing for a few hours now. Unfortunately, we didn't manage to catch anything, but uh, the pleasure is all in the waiting and soaking this tranquil. Um, world uh, that surrounds me it's um, absolutely absolutely stunning and the peace there's nobody around but for uh, me and Steve who is still trying to change tactics so that we can have at least a couple of decent catches the day is not over yet so yes we go back home tomorrow to England southwards so uh, we leave all this behind us and uh, it's been an amazing journey we were going back down the east side of England through the um, Northumbrian forests past Newcastle Leeds the rest of Yorkshire Nottinghamshire Derbyshire, Leicestershire and Northamptonshire and uh, maybe I'll say a final goodbye to this trip tomorrow. Uh, before I forget here is a little hello to my half Scottish friend Simon Miller. Hello Simon. You surprised me the other day at work by saying you're half Scottish and then you said jokingly it's your angry half. So here's to the Scottish side of Simon's and it's Tim saying hello and um, I will speak to you tomorrow again. Well I finished my Scottish diary here. I'm quite literally standing on the border between England and Scotland. So that's Scotland there and here is England and that's a stone that marks England and St George's Cross. Um, have a swing around. It's been an amazing journey and uh, we will come back again back to um, Scotland. Um, yes, thank you for sharing the journey with us and what next and I'm sure I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye for now.